Now back here in the United States, all week long, Jessica Stone has been reporting on the fracking boom in the U.S. state of Pennsylvania. In her latest installment, she visits the northeastern part of the state, where vineyard owners have been debating whether to grow their vines side by side with natural gas wells. Along the shores of America's Lake Erie on the U.S.-Canada border lies a strip of land where you'll find Nick Mobilia driving through his vineyards. But the only reason you can grow grapes here is because of Lake Erie. You can rest assured if you say Concord, you're probably going to be right seven times out of eight. Just down the road, winery owner Bob Mazza is checking on his grapes too. And we as a small wine producer, we really embrace the changes from year to year. One change both do not embrace, the influx of interest from energy companies who want to drill hundreds of meters beneath these vineyards for natural gas. Northeast Pennsylvania's wineries produce more than 750,000 liters of wine each year alone, but they're also attractive to the oil and gas industry for this reason. They're on the border between two shale formations that are rich in natural gas. Most farmers are really interested in it. And it's basically because of the extra income that they would get to help them you know, sustain their businesses. Nick Mobilia is a third-generation fruit and wine farmer and the president of the Erie County, Pennsylvania Farm Bureau. You, you couldn't imagine yourself doing anything else? No, I mean, I was, I was out here with my dad and my grandfather when I was a little kid running around, and here we are. And we need our next generation of children to stay on the farm and take over these businesses and keep the food production going. And this is a great source of additional income for these people. <laughs> this one you want to try? Yes, I'll okay. take that one right there, please. But Mobilia, who's considering selling his mineral rights for gas exploration, says energy production in such a densely populated area should come with preconditions. Uh, you need a track record. You need to show everybody here that we can do this and do it safely. So you bought this property, Bob, knowing that this well was on it? Oh, yes. Bob Mazza already has an Empire Energy natural gas well in the middle of the corn he grows for whiskey. Well, we just introduced our corn whiskey. Its royalties pay part of his property taxes. If Empire came back to you and said, we want more wells on your property, would you sell them more leases? Probably not. Why? Probably not. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not opposed to gas and oil exploration. I am opposed to the fashion that it's being done. I don't, I don't think enough safeguards are being uh, taken in terms of how they they do it, and I don't think there's enough uh, studies, enough science. Bob worries about the chemicals used in the hydraulic fracturing process, which are forced into the ground to release the natural gas. They end up in ponds like these. And what do you do with that, um, that material? That's another problem that people don't consider. As both business owners weigh their options, the question remains, will oil and gas go better with wine? than they do with water.